Okay, so let's sit down and try this video again. Hey everyone, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Today we are redoing a video of sorts. I did a video in the past on blender brushes versus blending tools. And in the comments of that video, you all had a lot of thoughts and I wanted to do a second video or an update and kind of update you guys on some of the things you were asking and also share some of my thoughts. At the beginning of that video, I shared on screen some of the smaller blending brushes and I really only took a look at these versus these but in today's video, I'm going to be walking you guys through kind of the importance of some of these smaller blending tools as well. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. One of the first criticisms that I got is I was sharing a clean blending tool versus an already inked blending tool from Ranger. So in today's video, let's take a clean blending tool and share with you the results that I get with this. All right, I grabbed a piece of stark white cardstock. We have our crispy clean blending tool. So I'm using Guppy. I'm going to swipe it in my ink pad like this. One thing that I find really helpful to get these super saturated is instead of just tapping them into the ink, I like to give good pressure pressure and swipe and I find that that's going to really saturate your blending tool nicely. So let's go into here and start our blending. I'm going to start it from the corner and I always say the Simon Hurley Create inks are good at blending no matter how saturated your blending tool really is. So you can go in here a second time if you want to and start building up that color more and more but you really don't see too many harsh marks and if you do see anything you can always continue working that into the cardstock. That's one thing that I love about these inks is they're really easily to blend out into white and not have any issues. So that was my blending tool, completely crisp and clean when I started and we're already starting to build up some color saturation in here. The reason why I started with an already saturated tool last time is because this is how your tool is gonna get within a couple days if you use it. So I just wanted to share it kind of how it's going to be when you get it. But I totally get that and I wanted to share with you guys, this is how it will look right, fresh, and clean. Another thing that was brought up is I didn't share these already inked up. And the reason for that is because these are kind of more synthetic bristles. And I find that you can really clean these easily and the ink will come straight out. Like you can already see like there's white bristles in there and most of the ink comes off when you use it. But I have been using these for a little while whenever I want a lighter blend. And this one is definitely more saturated now. So I'm going to go in and you can already see it's a much lighter blend and that's not a roast, that's not a bad thing. I actually have been using these if I want a really light look. One of the things people were saying in the comments of my video is some people just love these because they struggle with the intensity or they're really heavy handed and this gives them a nice way to easily build up the colors. That looks totally great either way. This is a little bit more saturated of a color and this took several more layers, but I do like how that blended out in the end. Another thing you guys had brought up is why I didn't compare these blending brushes with the Picket Fence blending brushes. And honestly, I don't really have a good reason why I didn't grab these and test them out. I just thought since they're blending brushes, they're both equal, but let's give them a go and see which one I like better or if they're kind of similar, I'll let you guys know. So let's go in with Midnight Snack first. This is one of the newer colors and I'm just in love with it. So I'll load it up onto my blending brush. I'm gonna go in here and start blending. And you can see a little bit of the texture of the cardstock. That's one of the problems that I had with the blending brushes, but let's just keep blending it out. All right, so now let's go in with the Picket Fence blending brushes and lay down some color. Um, the thing with these is they are a little bit bigger. I think there are some sizes like this in the Picket Fence pack, but these come in more of an assorted variety pack. So let's take a look at how I kind of feel about the different sizes. This one's definitely a lot larger of a brush. Lots more bristles are packed into here. So let's go into Triple Berry with this one and see just how I feel about this larger brush. I think this would be cool, like let's say you're doing stenciling or you want like a larger background covered in no time. I think this is a really good way to do that. Okay, so we'll lay this down. It's like just like the same size as my ink pad, which is funny. But I'll lay this down and I actually do like how this one blends. I think it's kind of nice because, you know, those are a little bit more rounded and not really touching the cardstock. So you get a really smooth blend across. 
So these are the Picket Fence blending brushes and these are the other colored blending brushes. So I think this more depends on the size. If you guys want a little bit more concentrated color in smaller areas, definitely go with the smaller brushes from any brand. And if you want a little bit larger areas to cover more of a background or get a little bit of a softer edge, definitely go with some of the bigger brushes. Now I wanna go in depth with some of the mini blending brushes and also little tiny ink blending tools and kind of share the purpose of those. So I'm gonna go in with some of my maker stencils. Let's start off with the shell maker, but this would be good with the flower maker or window maker stencil, because these have a lot of smaller areas in them for blending. So for this kind of thing, I would take out my ink pad. In this case, I'm gonna grab Guppy. I usually grab one of these little mini ink blending tools, and I'll go into the shell and just start blending it out. Now, the thing, the thing that I love about these stencils is they're kind of similar to stamp layering, except with stamp layering, you kind of have to stamp that solid ink color, whereas here you can really blend and get a bunch of variation in each layer. And with this, I like to use these little mini ink blending tools, and we'll compare the brushes to the blending tools as we go. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my Prom Queen ink pad and add some blending to this. The thing that I like about these little blending tools is they're dual-sided, but I also like that they're the same foam that I love on those larger tools. So all I do is go into here with kind of a lighter hand and pressure and just go in and start blending and shading at the bottom or wherever you kind of want to add that color variance on. And then it's pretty easy to just go in and fade it out without adding any more ink and just kind of keep blending in that circular motion to add some color onto there. But I just love the kind of that shading that you're able to add with this really, really tiny blending tool. All right, next I wanna clean off my blending brush, so I'll go off onto a towel and just wipe off some of that darker color. I use Midnight Snacks, so I want it to be a little bit lighter this time. Then we're going in with the Sand Dollar. I'll load it up with some Clear Skies ink, and on this one, I'm gonna share all brushes. So I'll go into here and lightly blend this on. One of my things in the first video that I was kind of saying is these bristles are a little bit more difficult to control and make sure that you keep them inside of the stencil, but I'll just go in here and blend this out. Then we'll go in with Triple Berry and one of these little tiny mini blending brushes. And these are like little toothbrush looking blender brushes. You can get some in circular shapes and also some come in these longer shapes like that. I think these will be the most useful for me. And then I'll go in and apply a little bit of ink onto that brush and go in onto the corner and add a little bit of color. So you can see both of these are pretty similar. Again, like all of the blending brushes, I would say this adds color in kind of a lesser density. So you'll definitely have to build up layers, but that's not necessarily a bad thing since it's kind of really blending into that nicely. You just won't get as um, like dark of an edge right away and it's easy to blend out. So I'll lift this off the surface and there we go. We have two different blendings using the blending brushes and then using the blending tool. I think it really comes down to how you want to hold your tool, how you want to purchase your tool, and things like that. So these wooden blenders with the two sides come in a pack of five. They're dual ended so you can get 10 different colors on here, which is kind of insane. And then these come in a variety pack. I'm not sure if you can buy these little ones individually, but I'll have them all linked down below in the different ways you can purchase them. Here's what I say. If you have good luck with this blending tool and you want to get into some smaller, tighter spaces or add color down in smaller areas, these are definitely the way to go. But if you love the blending brushes, these might be the way to go for you. I just wanted to kind of clear it up because a lot of people were asking what these different sizes were for because they didn't look very useful to them just by looking at them. I'm going to go in with my scene maker stencil and kind of share my different applications and how I would go about using both of these tools. So with this stencil, I love it because it has all the different things to really complete a scene in one stencil, which I think is pretty unique. Otherwise, you'd usually have to buy them all separately. So I'll go in with my ink pads here and my regular foam blending tools first. I like to use just the foam for things like grass or things that I want to be a little bit more solid. So I'll go in here and blend this out. So I'm just going in here to add a second color on top of this for a little bit of shading. And once I'm done with that, I can lift that off and I just like how solid of an area you get of color. For the sun, I want a really bold and vibrant color once again. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit of Guppy and my ink blending tool and just go in here and blend this out as well. All right, now let's get into the time where I would use the brushes and pull those out. So I'm going to grab the blue blending brush and a little bit of clear skies and this is totally a great time to pull these out. 
It's a great time to get a little bit of a lighter color, not have so much contrast, and really be able to fade it out into white and get a lot more of a wispy kind of look. So with these clouds, I'm just going to take this, add a little bit of ink there, and start my blending. So look at that, it just kind of softens that blend a little bit more. I did get some kind of darker areas, but if you wipe it off on your surface first and then go into blending, you shouldn't get any super harsh areas. And with things like clouds or stuff like that, I just love like going in and less is more with this because you really get a super soft and subtle look that you want. Wipe it off on my surface and then I'll go in and just get a really light blend of ink onto my card. I'll do the same things with the clouds. I'll go in with a little bit of woof, wipe off my blending brush and just go in here and really softly do it. And like I was saying with the clouds, it really doesn't look like you did much at all until you lift that off and you see that really great color that you just laid down. So I'll go in here with a little bit on this side too, kind of blend that out. And you'll see, once you lift it off, that there definitely is ink down on that surface that you laid down. In my other video, I know that I said I'll be using the blending brushes wherever I wanted a lighter coverage, and I didn't really share any examples, but I think this example here, where I used the foam for the darker, more solid areas that I wanted that color really intense, and then you can go in with the blending brushes and get a lot lighter of a color, and like, those super soft fades are just so beautiful to do with the blending brushes, and they're so effortless with those. All right, guys, I hope you found this video really helpful. It was definitely a much needed update to my comparison video. And in this one, I'm glad to have shared the mini blending tools and compared it with some of the other blending brushes and going more into the foam that's on the market. I really appreciate all the comments that you guys leave and I'm sure you'll do the same on this video. I just ask you to keep it nice and respectful, but I hope that I answered lots of your questions. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up. Be sure to hit that subscribe button down below to never miss another video like this one from me and I also have a phone number now so if you want to text the number that is on the screen you can get sales deals alerts when I upload new videos and also text me one on one which is so awesome thanks for spending this time with me and I hope you guys will have a wonderful rest of your day bye